The transfiguration of Jesus is a beautiful mosaic that we find in the Sinai Peninsula, so that spit of land between Egypt and modern-day Israel. A transfiguration is when Christ undergoes a dramatic change in appearance in order that the disciples could behold him in his glory, in his divine form. And this is found in St. Catherine's Church, which is currently a holy site. It is actually a monastery that is built on the site of the Virgin of the Burning Bush. Therefore, it is very significant, going back to the 4th century. St. Catherine is a popular martyr. The body of St. Catherine is, found, is believed to be miraculous. And this monastery is going to be funded by Justinian. It is both a monastery and a fortress, speaking to the period in which it's built. You don't need walls around a monastery if you feel perfectly safe. We have a lot of different peoples who might take advantage of a monastery in the 4th or 5th centuries, which is when this is being built. The idea here is what is technically denied to Moses is fulfilled by for Peter, James, and John. What is missing, what Moses cannot participate in, is viewing this transfiguration. So here Jesus is appearing to his three disciples, Peter, James, and John. Peter is awakening, in this case a spiritual awakening. Remember he had denied the divinity of Jesus denied his name, and here he's suddenly coming to terms with the fact that Jesus is a divine being. Jesus has that blue ellipse behind him. This is a mandorla, M-A-N-D-O-R-L-A, -A, and this is a body halo. It sets him apart from all of the other saints. He also has a more typical halo. Interestingly, he's dressed in white and gold. White, purity, but gold, also divinity, as well as purity. Again, gold is one of the few materials on earth that doesn't degrade, that doesn't oxidize. And so it's going to really speak as a metaphor to the divinity, the perfection that is Jesus. Elijah and Moses are on either side, flanking those three apostles in the center. They testify to his divinity. They are Old Testament prophets that spoke to his coming. And this affirms Jesus' dual nature as both man and God. He had existed as man prior to the crucifixion, and here he is existing also as God following his resurrection. So it creates, basically visually, it captures a very complex, very abstract concept in church teaching, this idea that Jesus is both divine and human. Something that is very difficult to understand. The idea being that this is a didactic piece, a didactic mosaic. So it's something that's meant to teach. It's something that the priest, for example, could point to and speak about it. And it helps add that visual element. No different than using a PowerPoint today or a priest in a church pointing to a stained glass window that depicts part of the life of a saint, for example. So it becomes this visual teaching tool that assists people who are going to be primarily illiterate in understanding a very complex issue or complex doctrine within the church.